Uh, this morning, uh, Pastor Jake and I are going to just kind of get things started, if that's okay. Come on. Um, our church family is experiencing some precious times in the presence of God. Can anybody at least give uh, a little bit of an amen to that? Amen. We're entering seasons of produce, okay? We're entering seasons where uh, you've plowed, you've planted, you've let the Lord water it, but then you'll begin to see produce. Yeah. We're seeing produce in worship. We're seeing produce in families. We're seeing produce everywhere. Yep. In fact, if you can sit in a worship like that and just be a bystander, you're going to feel very awkward. Yes. It's time to engage in the presence of the Lord. Yes. Yes. Is everybody with me this morning? Yeah. We're entering a new season. Yeah. These seasons have many different components. Everybody say components. components. We're seeing new men step up to the plate. We're seeing the next generation of men and women emerge with passion. Yep. They're not just here taking up room in the tent. They're engaging the presence of God. Amen. Yeah. Taking up some oxygen. We're seeing families strengthened and they're walking in this newness of life. Yeah. A newness of life with regards to confidence and how they are parenting their children. Come on. How men and women are approaching their marriages with the expectation of the gospel as the driving factor. Amen. In addition to this, we're seeing families and teams arise and launch from this place with a zeal to honor Jesus by sharing his love and salvation with the world. Amen. Isn't that an interesting yeah. season? Amen. It's you're watching the Lord produce. Yeah. Yep. You're going to go to the one association meeting. This is a season where you're seeing the produce. We're having brothers and sisters launched all over the world. Amen. Yes. And we sit here and we think about that language and how it can just float in one ear and out the other. Except look at all these children. Yeah. Look at what we're endeavoring to accomplish. Yeah. Come on, come on, man. Thank you, Jesus. We have to be poised and ready because 30 years goes faster than you think. Yep. yep. That's right. So this morning, we're going to engage in this capacity. Pastor Zach's going to go to Psalms chapter 25. Here we go. Let's go. And it would delight you to know that your international speaker is actually in the tent. Hey! Oh, Come on, we're talking about Oscar Castro. Let's go! Hallelujah! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Isn't that exciting, church? Amen. You guys know him very well. You've been watching his life. You've been seeing the produce of his life, the Amen. produce of he and his bride as they fight for holiness and righteousness Amen. and contend for the things of God. Amen. You see the good produce and the good fruit yep. that it comes, both spiritually and physically. Yep. It produces something, and it's yep. beautiful. Amen. Uh, I'm going to be quick because we want our brother Oscar to have all the time that he needs. Yeah. So Psalm 25, we read in our time of worship, but I just thought of our brother Oscar this morning as uh, I was reminded of this scripture from, uh, from our brother and pastor Eric, uh, some of his recordings. So I want to read it just again. It says, Who is the man who fears the Lord? He, capital H, will instruct him in the way that he should choose. His soul will abide in prosperity. Amen. And his descendants will inherit the land. Amen. Come on, did you catch that? Yep. Yes. His descendants will inherit the land. Good. We got land to take, church. Come on. We got land to take for the kingdom. Yeah. Amen. Spiritual warfare all around us. You know about it. There's no way you missed it. Yeah. But we have land to take Amen. for our king. The secret of the Lord is for those who fear him. This family fears him. So he entrusts secret things Amen. to them. Amen. That's powerful. Amen. He will make them know his covenant. And my eyes are continually toward the Lord. For he will pluck my feet out of the net. He is their helper. He is their strength. If you go with me real quick. I got two passages to share. And then uh, Zeke's going to continue for a moment. The first one comes out of Deuteronomy chapter 8. And this is regarding God's gracious dealings with his people. You are his people, right, church? Amen. Yeah. He looks to deal graciously with you. Did you know that? Yeah. His eyes are for you and toward you. 
They're for the Castro family. They're for the success of the Castro family because the Castro family is a representation of him. Amen. Amen. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. yeah. So in Deuteronomy 8, God's graciously dealing with his people here. And I thought of my brother when I, when I read this as we were talking some yesterday. I'm just going to read straight from uh, Deuteronomy 8, verse 2. So context, you'll have to take your time later and read it if you don't already know. But it says this in verse 2. You shall remember... Or you shall zakar. Anybody familiar with that word? Yeah. Just a little bit, Michael. Yeah, zakar. To remember all the way which the Lord your God has led you. So it's important to what, Oscar? Zakar. Huh? It's important to remember. Amen. It's important to remember all that the Lord has done, the way which the Lord God has led That's you. A good word. He's done it in the wilderness Amen. for 40 years. Yeah, right. Praise God, it hasn't been 40 years for our brother Oscar. But he would have done it just as well. Yeah. But he's saying, remember what I've done and what I've taught you. And he did this so that he might humble Oscar. So that he might humble Michaela as his easer in this. Amen. Testing you to know what is in your heart. The time that you were waiting for each other and didn't know it. He was testing to see what would happen. What kind of produce will this have? And he says to know what is in your heart is why he did this. Amen. And whether you would keep his commandments or not. And I'm grateful and blessed to say you're keeping his commandments close to your heart. You're teaching them to your children in their house and out of the house. And they're going to be raised in this manner. My next scripture, my last, is Isaiah 58. Another scripture that's very important to my family. But it's Isaiah 58. And we'll start in verse 9. It says this. Then you will call and the Lord will answer. My brother's testimony, you're going to hear a little bit. He called upon the Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord answered him. You will cry and he will say, here I am. Here I am. If you remove the yoke from your midst, the pointing of the finger and the speaking of wickedness, and if you give yourself to the hungry and satisfy the desire of the afflicted, then your light will rise in the darkness and your gloom will become like midday. Amen. He's raising a family. They're rising up. Yep. From what was seeming darkness. And now there's a light shining forth from them. This isn't where it ends. It goes on. The Lord will then continually guide you, Castro's. He's going to satisfy your desire in the driest of grounds. And he's going to give strength to your very bones. And he's not going to just give you strength so that you can stand up, though he will. But he's going to do this so you'll be like a watered garden. Yeah, and a watered garden will then be like a spring of water. A spring of water whose waters do not fail. The nations of Honduras and the surrounding nations will be watered. Amen. They will be watered. This isn't something we're hoping is going to happen. This is going to take place. Amen. And he's going to use his servants to accomplish it. And it doesn't stop there. Yeah. How beautiful it goes on. And then those from among you, those from among you, church, they will rebuild Amen. the ancient ruins. Yeah. You will raise up the age-old foundations and you will be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of the streets in which to, in which to dwell. Amen. We love you, Castro family, and we're Amen. excited to hear from you this Amen. morning, brother. Amen. It is a joy for all of us together to take hold of what the Lord has been speaking to us. Amen. Ever since we realized that the Lord had been, we didn't realize, but when we crested that 10 years, and the Lord had said, I have established a foundation, yeah. and what has been established is worth building on. And it's not just worth building on, it's worth imitating. Yeah. Yeah. And as the Lord has been adding to us and has been uh, building us up over the years, we have come to reckon with the fact that um, we will watch more people leave this driveway yeah. to go somewhere else then we will see come in and stay, yeah. if that makes sense. Yep, good. Why don't you go to Acts chapter 11. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> the setting of Acts chapter 11 is that this is the first time that uh, Peter, a Jewish apostle, all the apostles were Jewish, by the way, <laughs> Peter is preaching the gospel to Gentiles. In Acts chapter 11, verse 15. Peter has arrived to the home of a man named Cornelius and a whole bunch of faithful, God-loving Gentiles. And it says this, As I began to speak, the Holy Spirit 
fell upon them. He's speaking of these people that he's, that he's preaching to. As I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them just as he did upon us. At the beginning. Everyone say, at the beginning. At the beginning. Peter is speaking to men who were first, who were part of that original first planted church. Amen. In Jerusalem. And he's saying, I went to the Gentiles and I delivered to them the same message that we first heard. And when I gave them the same message we first heard, the same Holy Spirit fell upon them Amen. just like he fell upon us. Yeah. And it was his way of saying, God is doing over there through us what he first did here with yeah. us. Amen. And so every time that we get to see the Lord raise up a son or daughter of this house to go, we know that wherever they go, the Lord is going to fall in favor upon Amen. that place. Yeah. Just like he has fallen upon us Amen. here. Yep. Good word. This excites me about, yeah. about seasons like this. Amen. Pastor Zeke. That's a good word. We'll have Oscar come and, uh, and stand and get himself ready. Amen. Oh, yeah. Let's Woo. do it. Come on. Go. Yeah. 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 Woo. Hallelujah. As he comes, I would like to say one last thing. Church, you have the call to intercession. You have the call to stand in the gap and pray. And, and we're learning more and more that that's not just some person alone at home interceding, though it can be that way, but we intercede together. We lock arms together. These breaches are big. The work is significant. And... An intercessor is stronger when he's standing beside another yeah. intercessor. Amen. Yeah. Uh, the culture teaches Lone Ranger ideologies. The gospel talks community. Mm -hmm. the, the, the scriptures talk about how strong I am because of the Spirit of God in me and because I have Joseph Gresham standing yeah. 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 Nehemiah reiterates this when he's building the wall and he says i observed their fear Amen. and i said take up confidence yeah. for your father and your mother and your children and your sons and your daughters the work of an intercessor takes work when you go to tennessee realize you're an intercessor yes yeah. when you pile into a room to seek the face of god and it's hard and it's hot <laughs> contend for the people Lots in the room yep Contend for the nations that we are, Amen. that we know the Lord is going to send us to reach. Be one who fights on behalf of the others in the room. That's good. And remember the song lyrics from Keith Green. It's hard to see when your eyes are on yourself. Come on. Part of intercessor is going into a place and standing in the gap. Amen. Okay. You guys think Oscar looks like an intercessor? Amen. Yeah. Yeah. But he looked like an intercessor when he arrived, but he looks more like an intercessor now because he has you. Amen. Amen. Wow. So I want to convey the heart of this ministry for just a minute. Uh, several visions have been spoken over this ministry. Many, many have, and some are right. Okay? Uh, the vision that the Lord gave Pastor Eric of the lights going to the nations. And that's right. That's why I made it in a painting. <laughs> And Kathleen had a vision of these multicolored, many colored, different kinds of feet and people streaming down an aisle to an altar Amen. In, in, in this place. That it spoke of the nations and what the Lord was going to, to do. Come We're on, so confident man. in these visions that we are constructing a facility that only holds 250 people. You say, what oh, you got... That's a small vision, really. There's enough 10,000 people churches around here. <laughs> there's enough There's enough entertainment yep. if that's what people want. Okay? We we plan to see the call of God in people. Amen. Help them stand up in it. If we get to serve shoulder to shoulder with them the rest of our life, then let's do it. Yeah. Amen. But if we get the privilege Amen. of preparing some for different soil, we're going to do it. Yeah. yeah. Amen. And so we're so confident in this and we're unintimidated to construct something that fits 
within the context of what the Lord has showed us. The nations that are to be reached from this place and many of your brothers and sisters in this one association that the Lord is establishing. And we want to remind us that no matter where, no matter the where, whether it's Bethune, South Carolina, yep. Zimbabwe, Africa, Tegucigalpa, Honduras. Woo! Yeah, let's go. <laughs> we believe that yeah, Auntie came in and had no idea her little uh, nephew was speaking today. She was wondering, she's still just learning all this. She's wondering what that long bus ride was about. Yeah, come on. Yeah, By the way, is. always put bricks in your purse when you ride a bus. Yeah. <laughs> but she was wondering what that difficult ride was about. Two hours in, she's having an inter-dialogue, like, what am I doing, Lord? This is what the Lord was doing. Come Amen. on. So, Hallelujah. Uh, wow. <laughs> that may bore you, and I'm not sorry at all. It excites me. <laughs> it, I mean, that excites me, Auntie. Hey, that the you. Lord brought you here. Amen. You didn't know this boy was speaking, did you? No. He's a man. You didn't know this man was speaking, did you? <laughs> Jesus, Jesus is aligning this. Amen. And it makes me excited. Yeah. Yeah. The nations that are to be reached, no matter the where, the end goal is the same. And this last text I'm going to read and hand the pastor to this mighty man of God is from Jeremiah 30. But the end goal is the same. And that's the restoration and the establishment of God's people and the prophecy of Zechariah which says there will be the sound of celebration and rejoicing Amen. in the streets of Jerusalem Amen. again. The end goal remains yep. the absolute same. Yep. Because this is the work of the Lord. Come on. Go to Jeremiah chapter 30. Pick up with me in verse number 12. And um, we're out of here. Hallelujah. The service now rests in the hands of this man. Amen. Get it all. For thus says the Lord in verse number 12. Your wound is incurable. Your injury is serious. And there's no one to plead your cause. No healing for your sores. No recovery for you. All your lovers have forgotten you. They do not seek after you. For I have wounded you with the wound of an enemy, with the punishment of a cruel one, because your iniquity is great and your sins are numerous. Why do you cry out over your injury, your pain? It's incurable. Because your iniquity is great and your sins are numerous, I did this to you. Therefore, all who devour you will be devoured. And all your adversaries, every one of them will go into captivity. Amen. And those who plunder you will be for plunder. Right. And all who prey upon you, I'm going to give for prey. Verse 17. Because I will restore you to health. Amen. And I will heal you of your wounds, yep. declares the Lord. Because you... I'm sorry, because they called you an outcast, saying, It's Zion. No one cares about her. What? Thus says the Lord, Behold, I will restore the fortunes of the tents of Jacob. Amen. And I will have compassion on his dwelling places. Amen. And the city will be rebuilt upon its ruin. Amen. And the place will stand in its... I'm sorry, and the palace will stand in its rightful place. Right. From them will proceed thanksgiving. And the voice of those who celebrate. And I will multiply them. And they will not be diminished. And I will honor them. And they will not be insignificant. Their children also will be as formerly. Amen. And their congregation shall be established before me. And I will punish all of their oppressors. Yep. Let's pray, church. Stretch out your hands towards this altar. Mighty God, we thank yes. you this morning in the name of Jesus. Yes. And we rejoice at the work that you are accomplishing. We rejoice in a king who calls us and equips us and then gives us a company of men to run with that we might accomplish the full work of the gospel yeah, yeah. in our generation and in the generations to come. You, we love you, Jesus, yeah. and we say let your anointing be upon this service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Amen. Amen. Good morning, church. Good morning. Who's excited that it is October 15, 2023? Good morning. Okay. It, it could seem like just another Sunday, except this is the Sunday before the One Association. Amen. Amen. Who's excited to go to Tennessee? I'm excited to rock the shirt this morning because I am excited to see our brothers in Tennessee. Come on, amen. Amen. Uh, it's going to be a, a weekend full of fellowship, breaking of bread, uh, of receiving the apostles' teaching, and lots of worship and prayer. Amen. Do you remember what the church was doing in the book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 42? They were devoted to the apostles' teaching. Amen. They were breaking bread, they were fellowshipping, and they were devoting time in prayer. And so if you're going to the one association, uh, man, it's going to be a good time. If you're not, there's always time. There's always time. Uh, but I wanted to begin with that because we are we are getting ready for that, and the yeah. Lord is making yeah. us making us ready because He has something for us there. Um, and this morning, I am honored to stand here with you. Uh, there are some you know some things we would love to share, Michaela and Stefan and I. Um, I will keep you hanging tight, but we we have received uh, instructions from the Lord. We are moving to Honduras next next year. So I want to start with that. Um, given us his commanding orders and, and it's time to go to battle. Amen. Um, reading all they say that the word, you're reading the word, uh, second, second Samuel chapter 11, uh, kings go to battle Amen. Yeah. in the spring. And so uh, that's not the reason we're going to go in the spring, but we're going to be living around in the spring. Um, and the Israelites will, will go to battle in the springtime. Amen. And so we'll be living around spring or summer of next year. Amen. Uh, I wanted to give you those news before I tell you how we came to you Amen. and how we arrived in that decision. Uh, but the Lord has, has given his word and we are uh, obediently and humbly stepping in faith into what he's going to do there. That's right. Amen. And so um, just to share a little bit about about the journey and begin begin there before I, I jump into the scriptures. Um, uh, last uh, This past August, I, I counted 10 years of my moving to the USA uh, from the country of Honduras. Uh, these past three years spent in submission ministries, or I would say invested rather in submission ministries, have absolutely changed my life. Yep. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't until I met this man that I realized what, what it is to be a man of God. Yeah. And I'm still learning and growing in that, but I'm seeing their lives oh, and yeah. I'm Amen. seeing their, how they're raising their families. And uh, it has absolutely, absolutely made a difference for me. Amen. Uh, and it's, it's changed me. Uh, but the Almighty God has done great things. And yeah. time would fail me to recount everything, but. Uh, ten years ago, he paved the way for me to come to this country. Uh, I thought I'd be here for four years and then go back home. Uh, but little did I know that God, what God had in store. He knew I wasn't ready at year four. Uh, he certainly knew I wasn't ready at year six. I uh, right here in 2013. Um, and so year seven, he decided to bring me to Submission Ministries. That was three years ago. Uh, by the time I came to Submission Ministries, I had, I had slowly drifted away from the path. Um, growing up in Christian church and doing all the Christian things, um, I had fallen into a deception of this world. And so God needed to rescue me. And today I'm going to share a little bit about what he's done in my life and from there what he's going to do, Amen. the declaration that we are prophetically um, going to declare that he's going to do in Honduras Amen. and the nations surrounding that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but uh, just to just to share with you a little bit about how the burning for Honduras began. Uh, in, two, in 2020, I had been here for a few months, and I took a trip to Honduras. Uh, this was two weeks that I was there, and it felt like my eyes were open. Like, the Holy Spirit had taken a hold of me again. Uh, it's like a whole new realm is open to you. And I went there, and I went and visited a few churches, and I remember feeling a sadness overcoming me. Like, what? This is, there's something not working here. Something's not right. And I grew up in, in one of those churches and something just felt off. Like, what's happening, Lord? The people seem oppressed, spiritually oppressed. Um, and I remember just feeling a, a certain vexation in my heart like I never felt before. And those two weeks in Honduras, it really began to uh, lay a weight in my heart for what, what's been going on in the nation. Um, Honduras is not new to the gospel. Uh, I would say very religious country. But I believe that the gospel has been, been blurred and stained by precepts of men. And so I came back to the U.S. Uh, as I was flying back in, I stopped in Texas, where, where one of our, or some of our brother churches are. 
and some of the brothers that we're going to be seeing this weekend, uh, that is Justin Linton and Abin Bola Uh picked me up at the airport, and they took me to uh, their house so I could stay the night there. Uh, we went to visit also Pastor Peter's house. Shout out to Pastor Peter. Amen. Uh, he was here just a few weeks ago, and so... What happened in that trip, it, it was important for me, it was necessary for me to, to be there because as I was coming back from Honduras with all these things in my heart and figuring out, Lord, what, what is it that you're putting in my heart and what are you, what, what is this? What, I'm, not, I'm not understanding, but I want, I'm feeling something. And I was sharing that with Pastor Peter. He was encouraging me to write it down. And he said, just, just write it down. And he, and he encouraged me to begin writing a misusa. Some of you are familiar with a misusa. Yeah, it's on. a family banner or simply like, Begin to write a direction that, or begin asking the Lord for a direction for what he's calling you into. Yep. And so I wrote it down as I was flying into Virginia the next day. Uh, and I, I summarized the trip to Honduras in one word um, that was just kind of resounding in my mind. And it was the word to restore. Um, restore. And so, you know, wrote, I wrote what I wrote and I, I left my journal. And I, next day I'm, I'm coming to church and we're, we're meeting at Pastor Jake's house. And that Tuesday night, he's teaching on a uh, Hebrew word, shu, shu, which means restore. Wow. And so 24 hours later, what I had written down in my notebook, now I'm hearing from our pastor Jay, Amen. teaching on what that means. Yeah. Uh, this word shub also means to turn back. It means return, turn back, restore, or repair. And so Pastor Jake was teaching that day from Jeremiah 15, 19, and he says the following. Therefore, thus says the Lord, if you return, I will restore you. If you return, I will restore you. That word return and that word restore is the same word. Shoot and shoot. Okay, I want you to keep that in mind because that's important as we are receiving now some revelation about what the Lord is going to do in Honduras. Amen. Okay? If you return, then I will restore you. Before me, you will stand. If you extract the precious from the worthless, you will become my spokesman. They, for their part, may not may turn to you, but as for you, you must not turn to them. Uh, it seemed like that wasn't a coincidence, right? It seemed like the Spirit was beginning to speak, yep. uh, and I needed to listen. So I began to write these things down, and believing in faith, God was beginning to give some direction to what I was feeling. Uh, three years later, we find ourselves with commanding orders. Like I said, we're moving to Honduras, believing God has called us to do, to do so. Amen. Uh, and He said it's time to do it. Yep. And so... I want to share with you guys the main scripture for today. We're going to be in Jeremiah 31, 18 to 21. If you would go there with me, please. Uh, that is Jeremiah 31, verses 18 to 21. Amen. Okay, I'm going to read the scripture. Uh, it says, I have heard Ephraim grieving. You have disciplined me, and I was disciplined. Like an untrained calf. Bring me back that I may be restored. Or shoe and shoe. For you are the Lord my God. For after I had turned away, I relented, and after I was instructed, I struck my thigh. I was ashamed and I was confounded because I bore the disgrace of my youth. The Lord's response in verse 20 is Is Ephraim my dear son? Is he my darling child? For as often as I speak against him, I do remember him still. Therefore my heart yearns for him. I will surely have mercy on him, declares the Lord. Set up road markers for yourself. Make yourself guideposts. Consider well the highway, the road by which you went. Return, O virgin Israel. Return to these your cities. Amen. Now, before we, before we get to uh, mm. talk a little bit more about the scripture, I, I want to give you just a little bit of background. Okay. Uh, in chapter 25. There's a, a prophetic message to the people of Israel that they will be taken into exile. That they will spend 70 years in captivity uh, to the hands of Babylon. That, is, that comes before chapter 31, right? Chapter 25 before chapter 31. And so the people of Israel are receiving this message in captivity. Okay, these people have been taken away from their homes. Homes have been destroyed. Family has been lost. Amen. And so I will read. Uh, you don't have to go there, but I will read. Jeremiah 25, 4 through 7. It says, The word of the Lord has come to me, and I have spoken persistently to you, but you have not listened. You have neither listened nor inclined your ears to hear. 
Although the Lord persistently sent to you all his servants, the prophets, saying, Turn now, every one of you, from his evil ways and evil deeds, and dwell upon the land that the Lord has given to you and your fathers from of old and forever. Do not go after other gods to serve and worship them or provoke me to anger with the work of your hands. Then I will do you no harm. Yet you have not listened to me, declares the Lord. See, the message from God through his servants, the prophets, has been consistent all throughout. Amen. It's right. turn. Yep. Turn now every one of you from his evil ways and evil deeds. Yep. And dwell upon the Lord. Yeah. The yeah. land. Yeah. Okay. Turn and dwell upon the land. Yes. By chapter 29 of Jeremiah, which we're very familiar with, many of us grew up uh, listening to Jeremiah 29, 11. Amen. You could probably quote it, right? For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans for wellness and not for evil. To give you a hope in the future. Now what we need to remember is that when Jeremiah is giving that, that in chapter 29, you see a letter that Jeremiah is writing to the exiles who are in Babylon. He's writing this letter and he's telling them, there is a hope in the future. Amen. Yeah. Although right now you don't see it. Yeah. Although right now you're in captivity and you've been taken away from your homes. Mm -hmm. There is a hope in the future. Amen. Yeah. And so we arrive in Jeremiah 31, which, which is where we're camping out today. Okay, I'm going to read verse 17, just right before our verses. It says, again, the, the, the Lord is repeating this through Jeremiah, a few chapters later. 31, 17 says, there is a hope for your future, declares the Lord. Amen. And your children shall come back to their own country. Amen. Amen. Come on. And so we can deduct, yes, there is a hope for a people in hardship. But the Lord has to break down before he can build up. Amen. Okay? That's true. <coughs> so let me, let, me, let me step away a little bit from, from that. We're going to come back to it. But I want to share with you some, some testimony. Is that okay? Yeah. yeah. Come on. Right. Come on. Amen. Amen. Um, we have heard some powerful and stirring messages last few Sundays regarding intercession. Yes? Amen. How many of you have been stirred by those words? Amen. Yes. The marks of an intercessor was yeah. the last message we heard. Yeah. Sometimes that can feel a little intimidating. At least at least I can say, like, well, what do I do? How do I intercede? Yeah, yeah. Like, wow, how am I supposed to intercede for somebody else? What do I say? But I want to remind us today, Romans 8, 24, 27. It says, for in this hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what he sees? Now think of people in exile. They don't see hope. But if we hope for what we don't, do not see, we wait for it with patience. Yeah. Likewise, that Spirit helps us in our weakness. For we do not know how to pray, and as we are. But the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings, Amen. deep for words. Amen. And he who searches the heart knows what is the mind of the Spirit. Yeah. Right. Because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. Yeah. And so as I, as, I, as I go on to share, I want, I want to keep that in mind, that the Spirit is interceding for us. Amen. Okay. Now, let me ask you a few questions. Can you recount a time when you were praying, and maybe in that moment you realized, or maybe later, that God himself was leading your prayer? Yeah. Amen. Like maybe you had thoughts come to your mind that were not coming there. Or maybe you had somebody come to mind that you don't usually pray for. Yeah. Uh, maybe you pray with such specificity that, that would make somebody think you're crazy. Yeah. Like, yeah. how can you dare to say such a specific thing? God is going to do this. Right. Wow, that takes some boldness or craziness. I don't know. Or maybe tr God is truly leading that prayer. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe you ask something that you might have been afraid of asking from God. Right. Yeah. Amen. Whatever the case was, the Spirit of God is there to intercede when we give Him the chance to it. Amen. I recall a Thursday morning prayer that I heard a prayer that I just remembered. Um, at that time, uh, my brother Clayton and sister Holly uh, had moved to Virginia and were living at the lake house, which, uh, by the way, that was a, a miracle in itself and a natural boldness. Yes, they had moved. They had moved from Ohio, not knowing that they even had a place to stay. And they began driving, and as they began driving, the Lord provided a place to stay, which is amazing. Um, and so, but they were already living at the lake house, and uh, the time for them to be there was coming to an end. I see it was a temporary housing, and yep. I remember Pastor Seek praying. We would pray in our in our Thursday circle often for this, and I remember Pastor Seek praying one one specific morning, and he said, he made an audacious, audacious prayer. Uh, sorry for my accent when I'm a little nervous. My accent gets it's real thick. So uh, I'm getting there. Uh, but, uh, but Pastor Steve made a very audacious prayer. He said, Lord, 
give them a house a mile from the church. And I remember thinking like, wow, God is very specific. <laughs> One mile from the church. Do you want better? Wow. <laughs> so needless to say, Pastor Seek was not crazy because you can walk to their home. Um, and the Spirit of God was truly interceding through him on yep. behalf of Clayton. Yep. Now, by extension, Michaela and I got blessed because now we're living with them too. Amen. So, thank you, Pastor C, for interceding. <laughs> um, Amen. Romans 8.34 says, Who is to condemn? Christ Jesus is the one who died. More than that, who was raised? Who is at the right hand of God? Who indeed is interceding for us. Amen. Now, Jesus is interceding for us currently. Amen. He is currently interceding for us. Amen. Seated at the right hand of the Father. Amen. Now, when we think of intercession, we, I believe that the first thing is God simply wants us to come to Him. Yeah, yep. um, let Him intercede for us. Let His Spirit teach us how to pray. And let Jesus intercede for us with, with His atoning blood. Mm -hmm. That we may enter the holy place. Now, I'm going to get to my story now. <laughs> um, because I came to submission and uh, the reality is I didn't know how to pray. And my prayer life was very dry. Uh, I said, like I said, I grew up in the church, but prayer is something you just do for, for food, right? You eat and you pray, and that's it. Well, God needed to teach me a lot. Amen. And so I came to submission, and I began to receive teaching on the tabernacle and entering God's presence. Um, the Lord was challenging me into, into praying, and uh, I remember there was a time I was living with our brother, Jose Mendez, um, uh, and our brother who had taken me into his home, and are giving me a, a room to live here in Virginia. And I came to the house one time and I was simply, I didn't have any agenda. I simply felt like I needed to pray. Um, I went into the room and I began praying. And so as I began praying, I don't remember the many things I said until I began praying for Honduras and that nation. And that's not too abnormal because it's my country and I love it. Um, but as I continued to pray, I, I, I felt myself getting more and more passionate in my prayer. Uh, and as I, as I prayed and prayed more, I, I began to pray for the nations of Guatemala, and El Salvador, and Nicaragua, and Costa Rica. I was proclaiming salvation for these peoples, asking for God's mercy to remember them Amen. and forgive them. By this point, it didn't really feel like a typical prayer anymore. It felt more like a war. Uh, and I don't know if Jose was home at that time, but if he were, he probably thought I was crazy. <laughs> um, but I got up after praying, I felt a burden for these nations. And, I also felt a great peace, like, like that peace that you get when you know you're in the right place at the right time. Amen. Um, and, and I felt like I was in the presence of God. Yeah. And so that prayer marked me because Amen. it was stored in my heart as, Lord, I, I didn't know where that come from. And you must have put that in my mind to pray because I wasn't thinking of this nation. Yeah, that's right. And so uh, that was in 2021. Let's fast forward to 2023, earlier this year. Uh, again, I began to seek the Lord more intentionally regarding prayer. And by the way, I'm still growing in prayer. Amen. I'm not saying I've arrived. Amen. Uh, but the Lord is growing me in this. And as I began to seek Him more in prayer this year, knowing that uh, we had to uh, come to a decision regarding Honduras and timing. We already knew we were going to Honduras, by the way. Uh, but we are waiting on God's timing. And some things were moving in Honduras regarding uh, the school that I'll be working at to provide for the family back there and I began to feel a sense of I need to look for the Lord I need to seek the Lord's discernment and, and wisdom and instruction and so I, I I sought the Lord in prayer again and as I did that he showed me Jeremiah 31 mm. as I read verses 18 to 21 I was pierced to the heart I was reminded of what God the God of glory has done in my life this past three years how he brought me back from going astray and eating with pigs how he has restored me to a right relationship with him. Amen. And yeah. has now given me more than I could ever imagine. Yeah. Amen. Um, Amen. He's given me a wife and a beautiful son and another one on the way that Amen. we don't know if he's a girl or boy, but uh, we are so happy to receive uh, him or her. And uh, he's given me a church family. And, Amen. Uh, yeah. Amen. Now today I'm, I'm really grateful that my aunt gets to be here with us. Amen. Amen. Yeah. That was a gift from God. Yes. But the Lord's given so much and he's restored so much that the enemy really tried to steal. Yeah. Uh, he tried to destroy me. He tried to destroy, destroy the Lord's uh, calling upon my life. But God was gracious. Yes, He was. He was very gracious. And so, um, these two these two times in prayer where I where I really felt like God 
was laying and depositing something in my heart became instrumental in knowing what God is going to do in Honduras. Um, let's go back to the text here. Jeremiah 31, <coughs> verse 18. I have heard Ephraim grieving. You have disciplined me, and I was disciplined like an untrained cat. Now, Ephraim is grieving just after the Lord has says, there is hope. Verse 17, the Lord says, there is hope for your future. And then the Lord says, I have heard Ephraim grieving. Uh, by the way, Ephraim is representing the ten tribes of Israel. Um, just just making that, make sure we say that. Okay, Ephraim is representing Israel. And Ephraim is grieving. Israel is grieving. You have disciplined me. And I was disciplined like an untrained cat. Bring me back that I may be restored. Yeah. Now there is this realization that the people of God are having right now. They are coming to a point of realizing we have gone astray. Yeah. And they are shouting to the Lord. They are calling out to God. Bring me back that I may be restored. Amen. There, is this, there is this moment of um, dawning. I have gone away. I have gone astray. And so as I was receiving this word from the Lord, I first received it for myself. I first heard this and I saw myself in it because I had gone astray. Because I had gone away like an untrained calf. Yeah. Now, Hosea, you don't have to go there, just let me tell you this. Hosea, verse 10, 11 and, uh, chapter 10, 11 and 12 says, Ephraim is a trained heifer that loves to thresh, but I will come over her fair neck with a yoke. I will harness Ephraim. Okay, the reason I'm saying that is because Jeremiah is saying, or Ephraim is saying here in Jeremiah 31, I went away like an untrained calf. Mm -hmm. Hosea, the prophet Hosea, tells us that Ephraim was trained. Right. Ephraim was supposed to be doing a work. Amen. Ephraim was supposed to be carrying out God's will. Amen. They were supposed to be doing God's mission on the earth. But they had gone astray yeah. like an untrained calf. Yeah. And so... It really, it really was piercing my heart because I knew coming to the U.S., God had done this. He paid for college. I didn't have the money. He put in the heart of somebody else to do that for me. He, he, he brought me all the way here, and I knew, God, you, you were doing this. Amen. And, and I tried really hard for three, four years of college, and year five, I began to really just, just, just get tired uh, of trying this in my own strength. And, of course, the enemy saw an opportunity to, to deceive me, and... For a few years, I, I really I really forgot about the Lord, and my, my vision became blurred. Um, I was I was enticed by the desires of this life, uh, a career, uh, success, and all these things that really can take away from what God wanted to do. Amen. And so, as I was receiving this word, God was reminding me, I had called you for a purpose. Yeah. I, you were put to the yoke so that you could plow the ground. And you have gone away, but I'm going to bring you back. Yeah. And you're going to carry the purpose that I have for you. Amen. Oh, amen. Verse 19 says, For I have, after I had turned away, I repented. And after I was instructed, I struck my thigh. Amen. I was ashamed and I was confounded. Now again, uh, Ephraim is having a realization here. He says, after, after I had turned away. So there's this turning back. It says, I repented. And after I was instructed, so I was, I was hearing this from God and I was, I was thinking of this, this time of life when I was here in submission where my eyes were open and where the scripture became, again, uh, delightful for me. Where I wanted to read his word and I Amen. wanted to be in his presence again. And the more I, I saw his, his, his holiness and the more I saw his light, the more I was ashamed of myself. Yeah. Because the law is supposed to work as a mirror. Amen. The, the book of James tells us that. Yeah. That when you look into it, you're supposed to see yourself. Yep. And blessed are those who are doers, not just hearers of men. Okay? It's like a mirror. Right. And so, as I began to see, because my eyes were now open, I began to feel the weight of my sin. Right. And at first, that was working against me. And the enemy was really working against me in that. I almost like not wanting me, I wanted to not read the word. Because it would pierce me. Um, but this, this chapter in Jeremiah 31, verse 2, begins by saying, The people who survived the sword found grace in the wilderness. Amen. That's good. The people who survived the sword found grace in the wilderness. 
Now we know these people actually received the sword. They were under captivity. Yeah. Right. There was a nation that came and they destroyed. Now for us, there there is a sword that destroys, and that is the word of God. Yeah. It's like a double-edged sword, like Amen. sharper than a double-edged sword. Amen. Yeah, yeah. And it, and it comes through bone and marrow, yeah. joint. Yeah. And so, but those who survive it, it says, found grace in the wilderness. Amen. And so, what I was being reminded was God saying, my word right now seems hard to you because you have to repent, son. And because there's much that you have to turn away from. Yeah, right. And because there's much that you have to clean. Right. But if you can endure this and Amen. you can trust me, yeah. if you can walk forward, then you'll find grace. And Amen. I'll show you my grace. Yeah. Amen. And he did. Amen. He truly did. And so, look at verse 20. It says, it's Ephraim, my dear son. Look at the heart of the father. When a son turns back away and a son realizes that I must repent. I have gone astray. I have sinned against the Lord. The Lord's response is this. Is Ephraim my dear son? Yeah. Is he my darling child? For as often as I speak against him, I do remember him still. Therefore my heart yearns for him. I will surely have mercy on him, declares the Lord. Amen. See, the heart of the Father is beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. It's beautiful. And, and this grieving that Ephraim is experiencing uh, turned on into a godly grief. And you guys are familiar with this from 2 Corinthians 7. It says, uh, verse 8, uh, Paul is writing to the Corinthian and he says, For even if I made you grieve with my letter, I do not regret. Though I did regret, for I see that you that letter grieved you, though only for a while. As it is, I rejoice not because you were grieved, but because you were grieved into repenting. Yeah. Yeah, for you felt a godly grief, so that you Amen. suffered no harm. Right. Later in verse 10 it says, for godly grief produces a repentance that leads Amen. to salvation yeah. Yeah. without regret, whereas a worldly grief produces death. For see what earnestness this godly grief has produced in you, but also what earnest, uh, sorry, uh, what the godly grief, but also what seal, what indignation, what fear, what longing, and what punishment. Yeah. And so, there's two kinds of grief. Right? There is the worldly grief of just uh, wallowing in my sin. Well, that's not going to do much for us. Right. The enemy yeah. would like to keep us there. But there is a godly grief that realizes I have gone away, yeah. but God has grace for me in the world. Amen. Amen. He, will carry me, yeah. he will carry me through. Yeah. And that godly grief le leads us to salvation and, Amen. and, and, yeah. and restoration. Amen. Um, let me read to you from the book of Hosea. It says, Hosea chapter 6. We've heard this uh, recently from, from our pastors too. It says, come let us return, verse 1, to the yeah. Lord. For he has torn us that he may heal us. Yeah. He has struck us down that he will bind us up. After two days he will revive us, and the third day he will raise us up. That we may live before him. Yeah. Let us know, let us press on now to the Lord. He's going down as sure as the dawn. He will come to us like after showers. Yeah. As the springs rains, rain the waters of the earth. Oh, the, Lord, the Lord's desire is to restore Amen. And so he allows us to be broken so that he may build us up. Yeah. And so let's let's consider the good, let's consider so the, the call to Jeremiah. Yeah. Sorry, let me get there. Hmm. Okay, if you let's let's turn to Jeremiah one. Okay, Jeremiah 9, 1, 9 and 10. We're familiar with the call of Jeremiah, but I want us to, to put our, our sight there for a second. It says, Then the Lord put out his hand and, turned, and touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, Behold, I put my words in your mouth. See, I have set you this day over nations and over kingdoms to block up, to break down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant. If you notice that the call of, of Jeremiah is... Is one that it begins by plucking up and destroying and breaking down and overthrowing, but it ends with building and planting. Amen. Right. Amen. And so the Lord reminds us of that, and you see this consistency consistently through the book of Jeremiah. Amen. Yeah. We can go back to uh, Jeremiah chapter 31 in mm. verse 28. So back in our chapter that we are we are on today. Verse 28 says, it shall, come, it shall come to pass, but as I have watched over them, the Lord is talking now in past tense, He says, I have watched over them to pluck up, they have been taken from the land, to break down, 
to overthrow, to destroy, and to bring harm. So I will watch over them to build and to plant, declares the Lord. Yeah. And so we can say, we can say, we can put this together and say, the call to return is a call to pluck up, yeah. to break down, yeah. to overthrow, to destroy. Right. Is this repenting yeah. that shows the fruit of repentance? Amen. Right? Matthew 3 yeah. says, bear right. fruit in keeping with repentance. Amen. Amen. It's a call to turning away. It's like this U-turn. Right? I'm driving in this direction and I am cranking the car and I'm taking a U-turn and going down. Yeah. Yeah. And so that is the way we see repentance. It's not just a one-time prayer. Amen. It Amen. starts there. Amen. But it's Amen. followed by a... a a pursuit, yeah. not a perfect one, yeah. but a pursuit of a holy God that wants to make us holy. Amen. And, Amen. and it leads to a restoration. Amen. And so, as I share this with you, uh, I'm sharing with you how God has, was dealing with me in my heart, yeah. with this scripture. And I want to I wanna transition to... A few more things before I want to share with you what, what the Lord has given to us in regards to Honduras. But I want to share, I'm going to share with you um, in regards to this highway that God sets up. And so, if you look at verse 21, Jeremiah 31, verse 21, it says, Set up road markers for yourself. Make yourself guideposts. Consider well the highway, the road by which you went. And so there's this highway that I had gone in. Mm. It was not the path of the Lord. Right. Okay, Israel is being, is, is being told to come and consider the way she, she went. And Isaiah 35 has, has a very similar um, language. Okay, you see that these prophets begin to kind of share the same message. Amen. Hosea, Isaiah, Jeremiah. Yeah. Uh, some of them overlap. I know Isaiah and Hosea overlap, and Jeremiah comes a little bit later. Um, but I'm going to read to you from Isaiah 35. It says in verse 6, for waters break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool, and the thirsty ground springs of water. Verse 8, a highway shall be there, and it shall, call, it shall be called the way of holiness. Um, the unclean shall not pass over it, it shall belong to those who walk in the way. And the ransom of the Lord, verse 10, shall return and come to Zion. With singing and everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain gladness and joy and sorrow, and sign shall flee away from them. And so there's this talk about this highway. God is making a highway for you to come back. Or at least he was telling me, I want to bring you back. Amen. And I want you to consider the way you went. Set up road markers. Remember that one time I spoke to you. Yeah. Remember what I did when you were nine. Yeah. Remember when I also gave you um, a brother. I gave you a word that one time. Amen. Remember when you when you would hear that song and you would uh, think of me, right? Consider the way you went. Consider what God had done in Amen. your life. Yeah. Guide, set up guideposts. Yeah. yeah. Now when I was when I was interacting with this piece of that scripture, I was reminding of a time uh, when I was here at submission, and again I was going through a lot of uh, plucking up and tearing down and breaking down, and my sin was ever before me. I could see my heart wide open. And I remember one day I, I had just really felt like God wants to destroy me because I, I really sinned. I've been very sinful against him and he wants to destroy me. And I had gone on a, on a hike and I've, and I've been walking for maybe at least an hour, hour and a half. And just, just praying and asking God for forgiveness. And I remember it was getting dark and I'm getting in thick, thick into this, this forest, come with Robinson Forest. And I remember getting to a point where I realized, like, hold on a second, it's dark, <laughs> and I don't know where I am. <laughs> I've been walking and talking to the Lord, and I, just, I have no idea where I am, and I don't know how to get out of here. Uh, it was a Thursday night, we had class, and the pastors, I texted the pastors, like, I'm in, I'm in a hike, I'm not, I'm not sure I'm going to be there. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try my best to get there in time. And, but it was, it, it painted this picture for me, like, I am in I am in the middle of this forest. It, it, I mean, it's it's not don't, 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 it's not a huge forest, but it's it's Conway Robinson State Robinson Forest, and I don't know how how to get back away out from here. And I began like walking back and and looking, oh, like you know, that tree looks familiar, and I saw a sign over here, 
that, that was the picture that was getting in my mind. Yeah. Where God was speaking this word to me. Okay? Remember what I've done in your life. Amen. You can come back, son. Amen. Okay, come back to me. Amen. And so he's done great things. Yes. Uh, I'm sharing with you uh, Amen. my heart with you. Yeah. Yeah. Because this is this is what he's done to restore me. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and, and it was times of weeping like that that brought to times of joy yeah. uh, that I get to share now. It's good. And so um as I as I continue to think on this word from Jeremiah, uh, I decided to start journaling on it and writing it. And it was one time I was writing it that it really, really dawned on me. Okay. Now let me ask you this: If I if I were to tell you uh, the numbers 1,776, what do you think about? It? Oh, okay, 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 okay. Fireworks. Okay, fireworks. Perfect. America. 1,000. Now you typically don't say it like that, right? You say 1776. Yeah. Right. If I said that, maybe for some it'll become a little bit a little bit faster, right? 1776. You know that was the independence of the United States of America. Um, and so I'm reading this and I'm writing these verses down. Jeremiah 18 to 21. Jeremiah 18 to 21. Jeremiah 18 21. Hold on a second. I know that number. That is the independence of hundreds. Uh, a few years after you guys, maybe a good 50 years. And so 1821, Honduras received its independence from, from Spain. Okay, from Spanish domination. And so, I, I knew that from sixth grade. I haven't studied it in a while, but I, that number is in my heart. Yeah. Just like it is for you, 1776. Yeah. But the more I thought on it, I realized, like, hold on. I think Guatemala also received the same year of independence. And I think Costa Rica. And I began to kind of be reminded of all this, like, kind of going back to history class again. Yeah. Yeah. And sure. I began researching again, and I was reminded. There's these five nations in Central America, and they all received the independence on the same year, Amen. 1821. Yeah, right. Because Spaniard colonists had come to that area, and they all had kind of joined together and had fought against them. Yeah. And so that's where things began to connect in my mind. Right? The Lord, the Lord spoke this, and He was dealing my heart with it. But then I realized, hold on a second, this is not just for me. Yeah, right. This Amen. is for those nations. Yeah. And then I remember the prayer that I told you about. When I was in Jose's house. Yeah. And I was praying for these nations. Why was I praying for these nations? Yeah, right. That was two years ago. And I'm receiving yeah, yeah. this word now. Wow. Yeah. And this does begin to connect in my mind like, hold on God, like you've been speaking about this. Yeah. And it's beginning to make sense Amen. for me. Amen. And so, I want to share a little bit uh, with you some history of Central America. Okay, so bear with me. I'm not the greatest in history, but uh, I did a little bit of research. <laughs> All right? So, today there are seven nations in Central America. Anyone uh, bold enough to try to say them all? No, it's okay, it's okay. Um, okay, but we have okay, Guatemala, Costa Rica, Honduras, Nicaragua, El Salvador. Okay, I see Nicaragua. Um, Belize and Panama. Okay, so today we have seven nations. However, in its foundation of Central America, there were five nations that were originally there. Okay, and those were the five nations that I found myself praying for. Yeah. All right, nothing against Belize or Panama, simply just how the Lord was leading. I'm sure the Lord's going to lead, uh, reach them too. Uh, but I found myself praying for these five nations. Uh, it was the five original founding nations of Central America. Yes. Now, as I was doing research, I found out something that I didn't know. So maybe, I, you know, back in sixth or eighth grade, I was not paying attention. But I forgot that these five nations at one point were actually one nation. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. And I had forgotten about them. Uh, it was called the Federal Republic of Central America, or also known as the United Provinces of Central America. Um, they all received their independence in 1821, and then by 1824, they had all joined together into becoming one nation. Um, from 1824 to 1839, they were known as one nation. Now, the, the Federation was unstable, and it quickly descended in a series of civil wars. First from 1826 to 1829, and then again in 1838 to 1840. Conservatives versus liberals, people fighting for power. Um, many things were going on at the time. But there was a man by the name of, of Francisco Morazan. Okay? This man would be maybe like your Abraham Lincoln. All right? 
I want you guys to see this. Okay, uh, let's see, maybe, maybe the kiss. What bill is Abraham Lincoln in? What bill? Ah, let's see. Okay, Abraham Lincoln is in the five dollar bill. Okay, Francisco Morazan is in the five lempira for Honduras. He's 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 the the hero that we have in our in our in our five lempira for Honduras. Okay, he he's a hero that you learn for in school. Uh, he was known because he was president of that federation. And he was one who fought for keeping the unity of the five nations. Now, he was killed, betrayed and killed in 1839. And after his death, the five nations were <coughs> dispersed. And each became independent to what we see today, Honduras, Guatemala, El Salvador, Nicaragua, and uh, Costa Rica. And so Francisco Marasan was a Honduran man. And so we, we learned from him, we know about him, and I was reminding myself of all these things that I've known for a while that I had forgotten about and that now are making just a little bit more sense to me. Okay, why, did this man, why was this man fighting for the unity of this nation? Uh, now, we're not going to fight into political things, but we are fighting for the spiritual restoration of these five nations. Yep. And so, what, what I want to share with you today is, is the vision that God is, is giving us and continuing to, to build us for the nation of Honduras, Amen. in Guatemala, in Costa Rica, in Nicaragua, and El Salvador. Okay, um, our, we are believing God for disciples to be raised up. Yes, yeah. We are beginning with our own sons and daughters and believing that the spiritual sons and daughters the Lord will add. Amen. And we're believing that there are going to be arrows sent to the nation surrounding Honduras. Yeah. Yeah. Now, if you look at the Honduran map, and when you have your own time, look for a Central American map. Uh, I, can, I can't show you the screen, it's not working today. <laughs> um, but when you look at that map, you'll, you'll find Honduras kind of in the middle of those five nations. Yeah. And you'll find Tegucigalpa, which is the, the, the capital city where we're going to be arriving, yeah. right at the heart of Honduras. Yeah. And so, my mind is racing with all these things like, God, could you have had this in your mind more perfectly? Right. Um, when you look at the, at the, at the <laughs> flag of Honduras, you see five stars on it. Oh, that's good. Okay? Those five stars represent each one of those nations who were the founding nation of Central America. Now, some of the other nations decided to go different ways with their flags. Nothing against them. But Honduras decided to keep those five. Yep. And so I was like, why did they keep the five stars representing the nation? They have right. gone independent. Why? And so I'm, I'm, I'm wrestling with all these things and asking the Lord, like, could it be that, that you are going to begin in Honduras and then reach all those other nations? Wow. Amen. We may not see it with our own eyes. It may be Esteban, my son, or it may be his, his son or his grandson. Yeah. Um, we don't know, but we're going to begin laboring there for that. Yep. Yeah. With this in mind, believing that God has set his sight on these people. Amen. And that he sees them as a people group. Okay, and he's calling this people group to return to him. Amen. And to hold to the promises, if they return, he will restore them. Amen. Amen. Uh, the message that we're going to deliver is not new. In fact, it's a, it is a very ancient one. Okay, the call to return is the call to repent. Yeah. Amen. Right? Matthew 3, 1, 12, 1, 1 and 2. In the days of John the Baptist, came preaching in the wilderness of Judea. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Yep. Matthew 4, 16 and 17. The people dwelling in darkness have seen a great light. And for those dwelling in the region, in shadow of death, on them a light has dawned. From that time, Jesus began to preach, saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Yeah, Acts 2, 37. It says, Now when they heard this, they were out. To the, they were cut to the heart. By the way, we're, we're talking about Peter here. He's giving his speech to, to the, the Gentiles and the Jewish people in the area. This is on Pentecost. And the people were cut to the heart. And Peter said, they said to Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized. Every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ. Yep. For the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And so the call is, is not a new one. It's an ancient call. Yeah. It's a call to repent. Yep. It's a call to repent, yeah. to turn back, and to begin walking again yeah. in the ways yeah. that the Lord has established. Yeah. It's the ancient path that we see in Jeremiah 6. Um, as the days pass, it becomes more clear, church, that we have to roll against the current. Yeah. Right? Um, we know, and again, I haven't been in Honduras for 10 years now, but... Uh, by the time I spent there, 20 years I spent there before coming here. Honduras is a religious country. It's many churches, and many, many have the word of God or the name of God in their mouth. But maybe their hearts don't know them, don't know him. Or maybe, maybe their vision of who God is has become blurred. And so, uh, we are gaining understanding of getting there, knowing 
We, we're going to have to roll against the current. Yeah. Yeah. We're gonna, we, we can't just follow that passive uh, way and right. winds of doctrine right. that are leading the church astray. Yeah. Um, the world is moving in one direction, we are going the opposite way. Yeah. Simply right. because we're going back to the beginning. Yeah. That was who established the very the primitive church of God. Yeah. They were devoted to the apostles' teachings, to the breaking of bread, to the fellowship, yeah. and to prayer. Mm -hmm. The church doesn't have that. I don't know they can go themselves to church. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we're trusting God that He's going to lead us in it and that He's going to he will. Uh, add to us. And so he will. Um, we're getting to a close here. And I want, you, I, want, I want you guys to set your minds again on intercession because we've been talking about this the last few weeks. And so I'm going to give you some things to intercede for as you think of us, uh, preparing for Michaela and I to get there. And as, as you think of us after we've gone there, okay, would you, would you pray with us? Uh, would you pray that the Lord sends and raise laborers with us? Okay, we are believing God for a three-strength core. Strength core. Okay, we see the strength in our pastors. Uh, we, our pastor seek open saying that. We're no longer the one-man show uh, that we see in many churches. That doesn't work. Okay, we're believing God that he's going to add two families to us uh, to help us in this labor. Okay, two men that we're gonna, we're gonna, are going to lead their families in the righteous way. We don't know who they are yet. So pray for us in that manner. Amen. Um, pray for the students and teachers of International School of Tegucigalpa. Okay, this is the school where I'm going to be working. And this is the school that the Lord used as an instrument to bring me to the U.S. and, and to fund my, my, my college uh, here. And we're, I'm going to be going there and laboring there. And so... Pray that the Lord would raise disciples from you. Yeah. Pray that God would already begin preparing the heart of some teachers there. And I would ask you that you pray for the hearts of the people in the, the entire five nations to be tilled, even from now, that they may receive the implanted word of God and return to Him. And so, and then pray for favor, favor for us as we prepare to go and all the things that uh, Mama has to do and uh, what to get rid of, what not to get rid of. <laughs> I'm just being funny with that. I'm just being funny with that. But of course, there's details. You know, what do what, you know? How do you ship a car to Honduras? I don't know. And so, pray for us in these next coming uh, eight, nine months that we that we would have wisdom in all these things. And so, thank you, church, for letting me share with you. Uh, it's been a delight. Amen. And, uh, I just want to say I love you. We love you, Austin. Awesome. Let's 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 stand up and pray. Let's stand up and pray.